Avengers Endgame is on the horizon. The worst came to pass and the Avengers failed in Infinity War. Thanos defeated them all and accomplished his goal of assembling all six Infinity Stones, wiping out half of the universe and gained internet meme status to rival Pepe the Frog. But as teased in the post credit scene and the final teaser, Thanos will return, the story of the Mad Titan is not yet finished. Endgame is set to feature the remaining Avengers and Guardians not only trying to reverse what Thanos has done, but also to defeat him. So what better way to prepare for such a thing than to recount how Thanos has been defeated in the past? While the films have pretty obviously differed from the source material in ways both big and small before, the Russos and their writing team of Marcus and McFeely also frequently draw inspiration and visuals directly from the comics. So with that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, back from chuckling in an immature way at McFeely's last name to bring you 10 characters who have defeated Thanos. Number 10, Thor. The God of Thunder has gone toe to toe with Thanos many times throughout history and rarely has it ended well for our beloved Asgardian. Thanos is almost always a more powerful character who beats Thor at his own game, but on one particularly noteworthy occasion, things went a bit differently. In Thor Volume 2, issue number 25, Thor faces the Mad Titan and looks to be set up for failure once again. That is, until Fire Lord shows up gifting Thor with a new set of Asgardian armor forged by Odin himself. After putting it on, Thor is able to hold his own against Thanos. The fight comes to an end when Thor sends Mjolnir crashing down on top of Thanos' head, reducing it to a purple bloody pump. Of course, this was later retconned to be a clone of Thanos because, you know, comics. Nonetheless, Thor killed him, if only temporarily. At least Thor from the comics knew the most valuable lesson of all. Always go for the head. Number 9, Drax. As detailed in the films, Drax and Thanos have a history rooted in the murder of Drax's family. However, in the comics, this was even more overt. Originally, Drax wasn't even an alien. Drax was a human named Arthur Douglas, whose family just happened to have the misfortune of spotting Thanos' ship during his first scouting trip to Earth. To prevent any witnesses, Thanos killed all of them, including Arthur Douglas. Around the same time, Kronos, father of the gods, was engineering a way to stop Thanos for Mentor, Thanos' father. This resulted in Kronos programming a body and putting Douglas' soul inside of it, creating Drax the Destroyer, and giving him one purpose in life to destroy Thanos. Drax finally fulfilled this purpose in Annihilation No. 4, which saw Thanos teaming up with his fellow baddie Annihilus. After slicing his way through Thanos' army, Drax punches through Thanos' back and rips out his still beating heart. Might be a bit intense if it happens in Endgame though, but you know. Number 8, Hulk. In the opening of Infinity War, Thanos and Hulk did not get along. So much so that Hulk absolutely refused to even share screen time with him again for the rest of the film. Turns out that animosity is a running thing between these two off-coloured behemoths. In Marvel Zombies 2 issue 1, the entire universe has been taken over by the zombie plague. As a group of zombified characters all discuss whose flesh they're going to have to eat in order to survive, Thanos makes a not-so-subtle hint that he thinks it's Hulk's fault that they are so scarce on resources because of how much he eats. Hulk doesn't take well to this, throwing a sucker punch directly through Thanos' head. His head explodes on impact and he's never heard from again, at least in this continuity. It's just so elegantly simple in the best Hulky kind of way. Number 7, Doctor Doom. Now, seriously, if there's one character who's probably suffered the most from failed big screen iterations, it's gotta be Von Doom. Between three feature film appearances in the last 15 years, none of them have even come close to capturing just how horrific and truly menacing Doom is as a character. In Secret Wars number 8, Doom has become an all-powerful warlord of the planet Battleworld, now known as God Emperor Doom. As the heroes begin to prepare a mounted attack on Castle Doom, Thanos arrives on the planet to confront Doom personally. Doom tries to come to a peaceful agreement with him, asking only that he bow before his new god emperor. Thanos doesn't take well to this, insinuating that he is still the more powerful villain and that Doom should kneel and ask him for mercy. As a response, Doom rips Thanos' spine from his body with one hand behind his back. Number 6, Deadpool. 
Sometimes Deadpool's incessant rambling and inability to ever keep his mouth closed is a serious weakness for the character, but sometimes it's an incredible strength. In Deadpool vs Thanos number 4, a cosmic power Deadpool and Thanos are fighting over Death's love. She stands and watches the two fight, but Deadpool's innate knack for talking during action sequences pays off. He points out that all Thanos is ever trying to do to seduce death is to kill half the universe, but by killing half the universe, he's also saving half the universe from death, so he's arguably just as pro-life as he is pro-death. Death buys into Deadpool's weird line of thought and abandons Thanos again, leaving Thanos to grow weak and die without her. She's kind of a terrible girlfriend to be honest. Thanos bro, you could do so much better. Number 5, Squirrel Girl. It may seem like a strange concept that Squirrel Girl was able to defeat Thanos, but she's actually easily one of the most powerful characters in the entire Marvel Universe if we're going by feats. She made her very first appearance saving the rest of the universe by taking down Doctor Doom single-handedly and has since earned a reputation for being unbeatable. She's defeated MODOK, Terax and even convinced Galactus not to swallow the Earth. So when she and Thanos went toe-to-toe -to -toe in the 2005 GLXmas special, things didn't go well for the big purple wonder. The battle is relayed to the viewer through Uatu, the Watcher's viewpoint, as he speaks of the battle he saw. Armed only with one squirrel, Uatu details how Squirrel Girl defeated a fully powered, death-blessed Thanos in a fight. Number 4, Adam Warlock. Thanos and Adam Warlock go way back. In the original Infinity Gauntlet storyline, Warlock was the only force able to truly oppose Thanos once he had assembled all of the Infinity Stones. In Marvel 2 in 1, number 2, Thanos appears to be all powerful after assembling all six stones in the Gauntlet. He even defeated Adam Warlock and imprisoned him within the Soul Stone. However, during battle, Spider Man is able to pull loose the Soul Stone and free Warlock's soul from it. Warlock then uses all of his remaining power to turn Thanos to stone. The Avengers celebrated their victory and gave Adam Warlock's body a fittingly heroic funeral as his soul returns to the alternate plane within the Soul Stone and finds peace, while Thanos was doomed to an eternity in stone. Of course, eternity didn't last forever, but it did last a surprisingly long time. Thanos would not be seen again for another 23 years, until he returned more powerful than ever, just in time for his Infinity Gauntlet arc. Number 3, Galactus. In a rare switch up, Thanos joined the side of good for a moment or two during his miniseries simply titled Thanos. During the events of this miniseries, an evil force has corrupted the mind of another big baddie, Galactus, and convinced him to do his bidding in order to free himself from his planet-eating addiction. When Thanos learns of this, he goes to confront Galactus to try and snap him out of it. The conversation quickly turns violent as Galactus attacks Thanos. Thanos surprisingly is able to hold his own even without the gauntlet for a good while. He even withstands a full-on blast of Galactus' power at one point. But after multiple attacks from such a powerful foe, Thanos is bested, with one of Galactus' energy blasts knocking him down and leaving him battered and bruised on the floor. In fact, he's messed up so badly that he has to beg Galactus to spare his life in the aftermath. Galactus reluctantly agrees, but leaves Thanos completely defeated. Number 2, Jim. If there's one central message to be gleaned from any comics of the 60s and 70s, it's that anyone can be a superhero. And in 1979, one comic took this message to a more literal degree than any other dreamt of. In Spidey Super Stories number 39, Spider-Man and Hellcat have to fight Thanos to keep him from using the power of the Cosmic Cube. Early on, the cube is dropped and an innocent kid bystander named Jim happens to be skating by. He picks up the cube for a moment before Thanos appears and rips it out of his hands. Spidey and Hellcat continue their fight against Thanos, causing him to drop the cube. Jim seizes his moment and grabs the Cosmic Cube for himself. Thanos briefly attempts to bargain with Jim before Jim utters his eternal line, forget it, you're all wrapped up. Jim basically uses the cube to force the grass around them to tie the mad titan up, apprehending him and holding him there until the cops arrive and arrest Thanos. Number 1, Captain Marvel. 
If there's any one character who seems to be poised to deliver the final blow against Thanos in Avengers 4, it's Captain Marvel. What with the post-credit tease of Nick Fury calling in a greater power, it appears that Captain Marvel will be very much filling the Adam Warlock-sized hole in the storyline. In the comics, these two characters were often juxtaposed as long-time enemies. In Captain Marvel number 33, after previously being defeated by Thanos, Captain Marvel, the first one known as Marvel, returned to take on a cosmic cubed powered Thanos. This time Captain Marvel won and actually beat him so badly that even death became ashamed of him. So my money's on us all seeing Brie Larson being the one to absolutely kick Thanos' ass. But if the various ways he's died in the comics are anything to go by, it's gonna be freaking awesome.